in working with commitment. First, one aspect, one side, one facet, one, one entrance gate is an ongoing determination for spiritual realization in a very um, spiritual sense. That is, over and over we are committed to making choices. To go to sitting, to stand, <coughs> to go to session, to do good works, to bow, or a particular practice may be. And over and over again we make the choice to engage in the precepts and give up what's extra or what interferes or blocks us from that engagement. And so Shin is a good example of that because we, we come here, we of course have all given up many things in order to be here for this short period of time. And in Sashin, we are constantly turning away, we're constantly letting go, we're constantly giving up the desire to just give up, go off and be comfortable. And instead we keep showing up. We keep looking closely, and ever more attentively, to what is most intimate. We commit to penetrate to the truth. And in that commitment, we fail, and we fail, and we fail, and we fail, and we try every strategy we can to realize the truth. And we fail some more. And we go through the cold, dark winter, in the arid, dry desert. But if we have commitment, we keep going. And we always need spring again. No matter how long and hard, no matter how challenging, no matter how cold and wet, spring appears. And it's all the more compelling after the long, dark night, long, cold winter. Or she Lily used to say, used to quote, until you go through the winter that bites into your bones, how can plum blossoms regale you with their piercing fragrance? If you've ever spent the winter in Japan or months in Japan where there's no heat and it's really, really, really cold and suddenly spring comes, we it's wonderful. Or here, we've had cold, cold, red, rainy, dark times lots of rain, lots of darkness, and suddenly it's bright. In the spiritual realm, the same thing happens. We go through arid deserts, we go through dark nights, we go through miserable failure. But if we have commitment and we keep on going, we keep on stepping, we keep on looking, we keep on practicing, we keep on being present, we keep on being generous, spring always comes. Rashi Kapila used to say, even in the driest hole, the driest well, there is water. Sometimes it's just a foot below where you're at. We don't know. And of course, spring comes, summer comes, the fruits of our practice come, and then winter comes again, we lose them all. And eventually we entrust ourselves to the whole cycle. We entrust ourselves to the whole cycle of birth and death, the whole cycle of spring, summer, winter, fall. We entrust ourselves to the whole cycle. And then it all is fruit. And of course, this does not happen easily. Insight can take no time at all. But spiritual maturity takes year after year, lifetime after lifetime. Part of the fuel for that is to see that our pain and the pain of others has the same root. And so part of our commitment, part of our goal to awakening is our connection to others, our support of others, our practice <coughs> of others. And so when we make commitments to the spiritual practice, to the sangha, to the precepts, to teachers, 
We take on responsibility, sometimes quite onerous, sometimes quite difficult, sometimes quite boring. We give little recognition for it. It is that commitment that is the ground from which the fruits of our spiritual practice come forth. And of course, many people in our Sangha have made great commitments. Coming to session, taking all the different jobs of our community, being present over and over again just because we made a commitment. And not because we happen to like it or dislike it, but because we have a commitment to our own and everyone else's spiritual life. There is no separation between our spiritual life and others, between our pain and others' pain. And we have people in the community, of course, who've been head in Zendo for four or five years, showing up or on the board for years, cooking meal after meal after meal for years, continually returning to meeting after meeting, or living here and all the different things that go on here, all the pressures, year after year after year. This is spiritual practice. This showing up, being present, but it is spiritual practice. It embodies the spiritual benefits. This is the Bodhisattva path. And the truth that we can realize is that our practice and other people's practice are not two things. Our life and other people's life are not two things. That our awakening and other people's awakening are not two things. That our pain and other people's pain are not two things. We have to see that clearly. That this separation that we are so caught up in is at its root a dream. But it is the caring for one another. It is the activity of caring for one another that we can look deeply in to the truth of this. Again, many people can have openings into the transcendental, but it's only with commitment, for taking on responsibilities, family, relationship beneficent career, shouldering the burden and all of the things that come along with that. It's through that that not only do others benefit, but we benefit. Not only do we gain, can we find realization, but we and others make it alive. So it's important to reflect, what are we committed to? What is it that's most important? Both in terms of our own deep understanding, our own depth of experience, which is, in a way, a grace. And we can't make ourselves see the non-dual. Because the more we make ourselves, the more it's one-sided. In a way, it's a grace. When we open up, we can prepare the ground, of course we've been doing all week. In the koans, they talk about how do you take a step from the top of a hundred foot pole? A hundred foot pole, deep practice, ongoing practice, the practice over and over to all the different vicissitudes. And then we take one more step and forget ourselves. We take one more step and offer whatever little crumbs, whatever little shreds, whatever little bits of insight we have, we offer that because it is so important, so needed, the essential medicine. Even our, all of our little understanding. There is a case in the Blue Cliff Record, case 88, 
a person with three disabilities. And essentially, the teacher says to his monks, suppose you have a person with three disabilities, how would you help them? Somebody's blind, they couldn't see what you couldn't see your writings. They're deaf, they can't hear your words. If they were mute, <coughs> they could not speak and answer your questions. How would you help these people? If you cannot help these people, then the Buddha Dharma is meaningless, is worthless. But how do you help these people? How do we help people who don't want to hear, who don't want to see, who don't want to engage? How do we help them? How do we use this intimate practice as a bodhisattva successfully? This body is the body of all beings. These eyes see for everyone. Please take good care, continue practicing. Our heart's desire is never distant.